we'll proceed to the last uh, presentation, which is uh, done by the CAT team, my team, and uh, I'm delighted to transfer to Andre Truta. Andre? Thank you, Tal. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? I already shared my screen. Let me know if you can see it. We can see. Okay, great. So, uh, before we conclude, uh, this is the solution that Tal and I worked on during those days of the hackathon. It's called Trigger HPE OO Flows by Email. Um, let me tell you a few words about it before actually going into the demo. Now, we all want to automate, and in general, we should keep it simple, right? So, why not just send an email and then you're done? You can go grab a coffee, go home and do whatever you want because someone else is doing the job, right? Um, you might laugh now, but let me tell you some more stuff. Uh, what's the idea? So it, it, the idea comes out from a most common interaction. Imagine that you write an email. You do write an email on a daily basis. And you do it for various reasons, either because you want to get some info from someone, either you want because you want to delegate a task, right? So um, if any of these cases occur, then after you write an email, what happens is you normally wait for an answer. Um, someone needs to process your email, needs to read that, and come back with an answer. So after you wait for, uh, for a while, sometimes you don't need to wait that much because, um, you know, they are out of uh, the office replies. So then you get out of office replies, and you start to wonder, oh, my God, what should I do next? But anyway, um, putting the joke a little bit aside, after you wait for the answer, what you get is email reply, right? So, hi, I, 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 I get the job done. This is um, my report. Now, imagine something even further. Imagine that you want to write an email in order to trigger an overflow. So, um, you want to trigger an overflow for various reasons. Like, for instance, you want to help check um, a specific um, machine or you want to remediate a server, or you want to, uh, I don't know, do some dummy thing like um, generate a UID and get the UID and use it somewhere. So you trigger um, an overflow by email, and then what, what occurs in behind is that an overflow execution is triggered. So this is basically in the wait for answer. And um, at the end of it, a report will be given to you. So why not to be able to achieve that with OO? Uh, the question is if it's possible. Well, uh, actually it is, and Tyler, Tyler and I work on it. So what you get to do is basically write email to a specific address. Uh, you need to write that email in a specific format. And once you do that, an HPO central will actually monitor that email address. Um, once it monitors the email address, it catches the relevant data out of it. Uh, it triggers the desired task. And then it's able to actually create a report and give you uh, basically various replies. This is what we actually implemented, and uh, I'm about to show you. But before that, I just want to, to share how or on, on what kind of stuff we actually relied all, all of this um, interaction. So we started with the base CP that is available for you. Um, we also use Microsoft Office 365 CP. We made use of some items from HP Solutions CP, and um, we, we basically made our own CP, trigger main flows. Um, now all of these four uh, things actually interact together and are able to, to bring the, the, the thing that you saw on the previous slide um, to live. So how, how did it made it? How did we make it possible? Well, as I said, we created a, a listener, a mail listener, and actually it's, it listens to mails and it triggers um, uh, tasks. So you get the chance to actually schedule this flow. Uh, once this flow is triggered, it monitors the email, and if relevant emails are found, then tasks are actually triggered. Like, for instance, you can see here in the screenshot, uh, the mail listener and trigger um, got triggered, four new flows got triggered on our application, and as, the, as an end result, what we got, and I will show you live, is um, some reporting. Now, if you see a green report in our template, then it means your request got, uh, got requested with success and you, you get your end result. If you see red, then it means something gone wrong and you need to contact your administrator or do further actions. 
Okay, this is pretty much based on, on the slides. Now I would really like to go actually on the live demo, and then we can take some questions, I assume. Okay, so um, for the live demo, what I've prepared for you is first give me the opportunity to send some emails. So as I said, the solution is you send an email to a specific address. We are using this address uh, for the demo in a in a specific format. So let's say I want to I want to help check um, a particular host. So what I give is the the flow name here, help check, followed by by comma and uh, then a key value format, host and the actual host that I want to help check. And I simply send that email to uh, to this email address. Now, this is one example. Let's say I want to generate a new UID. I send an email to the same um, address, generate new UID. OK, great. Then let's say I want to create an application uh, container. Like, I do know that uh, I need a container for some sort of application. Now, I, I do some mistake. Uh, this is just for demo scenarios. Um, I'm triggering the right flow, but I'm not providing the right um, format. Then we'll see what actually happens. And this is actually the example with create application container when one provides the right inputs. So I have here uh, application, which is OCE, and, and the actual version. So what will and what should occur is that at the end of it, I should get a container on a specific host uh, ready to go OCE with this kind of version. OK, let me send the email. Okay, so now I sent four emails to a specific address. For the demo purposes, I didn't enable the flow, the, the schedule flow, uh, because um, before it, it runs, I wanted to show you something. So I will actually, during the demo, trigger the flow. So let me log into the central that is actually monitoring that um, email address. Okay, great. So run management scheduler. You see that I have here the mail listener and, and trigger. It's currently disabled. Uh, let me edit this. And before actually enabling it, I want to just say a few words about the inputs. Now, we didn't expose all the inputs that we have in mind. Um, we exposed just a few of them, like for instance, uh, you have the ability to to filter the mails that you want to monitor. In uh, in the demo case, I'm I'm using um, uh, the asterisk because I want to monitor everything that they gets in. Uh, but of course, you can you know monitor whatever you want. Um, for the demo purposes, I will monitor only the emails that got in in the last 10 minutes. Uh, actually, I don't know when I sent it, but let's let's say 15 minutes. And then what you are actually uh, able to do, you are able to, to monitor and actually not monitor, but rather use a specific um, file uh, flow, flow path in your library uh, where the flow should look for, um, for, for flows to be triggered, actually. This is customizable. Of course, you can monitor the entire library. But for the purpose of the demo, we are using just this. Uh, Pat. So let me trigger the flow. Uh, it's every day. What's the time now? 17. So let's make sure it runs in 22. OK. In two minutes, now and date. Save it. And now I do, I do need to actually enable it. OK. So this flow will actually trigger like in two minutes from now. And we'll see we'll see what happens. Uh, while while the flow is actually um, running and it's actually waiting for for it to to be triggered, I just want to show you a little bit about the the content itself. Uh, I will show it directly from from central. So it's under community mail trigger. Now don't worry about all this kind of uh, folder structure. Before releasing it, we are planning to actually enhance it, and we are actually waiting for for feedback from you guys uh, in order to um, know exactly how we should enhance these flows. So feel free to to post your your feedback. What we have here is the mail listener and trigger. As I mentioned, we expose just just these three uh, inputs, but uh, further further more can be exposed. Uh, we created some operations. 
uh, that are actually used by our mail trigger. Um, as I mentioned, some of them are rely, rely on Microsoft Office 365 integration, some of them on HP solutions, some of them on base. Now, you have seen in the schedule flow the mail bucket flows. Uh, what we did here, and it's a remark that we have, feel free to comment, is um, we have placed here the flows that we actually want to trigger. Um, we, in, in our solution, we really do think that this um, mail bucket flows location is, is great because it gives you the ability to filter just on a specific path, and it kind of gives you, um, you know, control on, on the performance of, of the flow and the rapidness of the response since you send the email and you get the result. Okay, I think I saw, I said too much, so let's get to the Run Explorer. Now, the mail listener and trigger is actually running. Um, I don't think at this stage this information is um, interesting, but let's, let's see it run, and then we'll move to Outlook to see if any emails uh, get in. OK, let's give it. A few more seconds. Um, it's going to take around 50 seconds or something. OK, you can see now that some, some other flows have been triggered. Um, some of them already got completed. The mail listener is still waiting for this one to complete. Now, considering that this one completed, the mail triggering and the listener is actually formatting the email. And it should complete soon. OK, so from the point of this flow, everything is done. Uh, I'm pretty sure the emails got sent. Now we need to wait a little bit for, for the exchange. But you can see it here. Send email. Emails got sent. They got sent to specific addresses, which are um, configurable. And then you get to see a result. Now, briefly, let me go here and see if I got some replies. Yes, so I got all four emails. You see here, generated UID. A UID got created. Now I can I can go and use it whenever I want. Uh, an application container uh, got created. I, I see some details. We You can actually feed in here whatever you want. We decided for the purpose of the demo to feed in the, the flow output, but you can put whatever. Um, you can see here the actual request that was done the same similar with the subject and the actual flow that was triggered and as I mentioned um, the result and of course some request details we chose to expose just these ones but you can choose to do uh, to expose whatever you want so all the flows got in as I mentioned if something goes wrong you get a red uh, format in which case you need to investigate further on okay this is pretty much the demo that I wanted now, let me know if you have any questions. So, uh, to Andre, it looks great. Um, so, similar, actually, similarly, we can do the same for SMS, for example, right? And, uh, yes, uh, now actually... Like doing additional uh, flow, to schedule additional flow that knows to listen to, the, to some SMS uh, account. Yes, actually, actually, that that one is possible since um, some time it has been implemented in the community, as far as I remember. So now I would say that we have the SMS capability, the email capability, as well as the the, the Siri capability, and looking forward to to see the okay Google, yeah. chat ops. <laughs> yes, and and chat ops, yes. Yes, but with chat with chat ops, maybe it will be simpler because maybe we we can put a plugin in chat ops, so it will be able to just trigger using uh, the REST API. Uh, yes, I'm I'm pretty sure. Maybe I'm not. Yeah. Uh, well, chat ops is already that. cooking. Uh, <laughs> we'll be able to see it in a webinar somewhere soon. Cool. Okay. Uh, Andre, if I want to implement this solution in my organization, right, as a customer, what are the adjustments that I need to do? Well, I would I would be frank and say that in the current format, we still need to investigate uh, a few more hours, a few more days in order to make it uh, publisher. Uh, we want to expose the right inputs to the customers. That's why I, I've been saying, uh, if you have any uh, feedback or input, feel free to share. 
Um, it's, it's already usable. Um, what I want to, to state is that you only need basically OO, right? So you only need OO. Now we choose to demo with Microsoft Office 365, but it can be uh, something else, in which case the customer will need to, to alter just the parts of the email listener, and, and pretty much that's it. But yes, indeed, we still want to expose, to make sure we expose the relevant inputs, and there are still, still some enhancements that we have in mind in terms of how the output should um, look like. Okay, and I have actually two more questions. I'll, okay. do, I'll do it quickly. First, the solution is based on polling, and you gave an example of uh, two minutes, I think, for polling. So how much load does it add to O Central? Um, well, we didn't uh, we didn't um, get it there yet, like to investigate how much load it, it does. Uh, but what I can tell you that the idea that we had with the with the actually having a bucket of flows that you want to use in this solution uh, reduced the exec the flow of execution with at least two minutes. Like if you're giving the entire library, you are not sure which kind of flows you want to run, then it takes more for, for the actual flows to pass the entire library. Mm -hmm. Okay, and last question. You demonstrated a way to look on a search and folder, and does it mean that automatically you can run everything that is underneath this folder? Well, actually, I would I would say that yes. What do you mean by automatically? So if I Sorry. trigger if I trigger a flow with something that is under that flow folder, yes. So so it means that any for any flow under that folder can be triggered just by putting its name in the title or in the subject of email. Yes, yes, yes. That's that's true. And the nice part is also that if, for instance, you create a folder, the, the flow and you know hard code some inputs because you know for sure what the target is like. I don't know, you want to create a, an example, a Docker container on a specific host, you already know that host, you, you can hard code that or use a system property in central and have it, and then you are just good to go, you just write an email with the flow name and that's it, because all the input handling will be actually done. So you don't need to, need, you don't need to know all the inputs of the flow, this is what I'm trying to say. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you as well. I also, I also have actually uh, two suggestions. Uh, so first of all, I think it will be good, independent of the flows and the solution, I think it will be good to publish uh, also the template of the emails to the community. Yes. Because uh, it's very nice, I mean, and others will benefit of, you know, having a, a format of the email, right, and they, they can reuse that. Uh, this is one, and secondly, um, it seems there are there is some pushing mechanism of, on um, exchange itself, right? So, for example, to have like some kind of hook in exchange that can push uh, or trigger an outflow from exchange side, right? Uh, not necessary to um, to to have all listening for uh, new uh, emails, right? Um, so maybe. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, 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 yes. I understand what you're saying. I, I think it is. I think you're right. Um, but we didn't get there. We we tried to end with this approach of having all monitoring, but I think it's a good idea, actually. Yeah. Yeah, maybe for the next version, but still, yes, it's, yes. I think, you know, it, it will improve a bit, uh, right, the, the execution time and how we actually trigger the flows. And it also, for example, in in POCs, I think it will really help to to show, for example, the integration the other way around, uh, right? That yes. it it will basically make this solution more complete. But yeah, I think uh, this is great. Okay, thank you for the feedback. Yeah, we are looking forward to actually implement all of this. Okay. Um, if there are no more questions, then I'll take the chance to actually conclude on the hackathon. This was um, the last idea. So I would like to...
Well, this was the last live idea. As we mentioned in the very beginning, there are three more ideas which we didn't get a chance to see them live because the owners actually left on vacation. We already have the recordings and we will place those three recordings together with this one pretty soon in YouTube so that the entire community will be able to access it and based on these videos the entire community will be able to vote. That means including you will be able to, to vote, we will provide the necessary means. Um, how you should do it is you should pick your top three ideas out of it and send, send them to us, of course through those means that we will provide. So we will need to specify my top one idea, the second place and the third place. And then um, the judges will deliberate at the end of it and will actually, you know, decide on, on, on the winner out of those top three ideas. Um, before I, I thank you all, I just want to say that there are two ideas which will not actually get into the voting. It, one uh, idea is the HBO cut ideas uh, idea, and the other idea is Andrew Wade's idea. So you will not see these two ones in the voting, uh, but feel free to vote for the other ones. Um, I want to thank you all that were here with us today. I want to thank, of course, the participants and the idea submitters and everyone who actively actively participated and got involved. Um, and last but not least, I want to thank the judges, to thank the judges for being here. Uh, the session, of course, would not have been that live if you wouldn't have been there, here with your questions. Um, of course, your job as the judges is not done. <laughs> so once we will um, put the ideas and the community will vote, you, you still need to get in touch with us. And actually, we will get in touch with you. So thank you all. Look for our email in which we will tell you, OK, now the voting can begin. Send it to whoever, you know, like HP partners, customers, whoever has access to the forum, we will um, actually promote it in the forum. And looking forward to hear from you and looking forward to, to see the winner of this. And the last but not, not least again, um, thank you for, for this. And we are looking forward to actually have the second uh, session of the hackathon, the community hackathon. OK, this is it. If you have any remarks, let us know. I just want to say thank you for organizing this. Cuts thank you. Thank you, Andrei and Tal. And congratulations for, for the achievement. I think we saw great dreams <laughs> and implementations as well of these dreams in, yes. uh, in this session. So. Yes, I, I agree with you. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank yeah, you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. I Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.